Hello everyone. So we all know that long haul flights are not very fun, especially if you're a peasant like me and you get stuck sitting in economy for eight hours. Yeah. I have unfortunately not yet had the luxury of sitting in first class and getting to have my own bed and having someone wait on me and getting to eat off of the fancy menu. It's gonna happen one day, let me just tell you that now. It's on my bucket list. But for now, if you are trying to save yourself a little extra money, then you are gonna need some tips to survive that long ass flight. So without further ado, tip number one is to load up your phone before flying. If you don't plan on trying to sleep for the entire flight, then you're going to need a way to keep yourself entertained. And normally if you are flying long distance, then you'll probably have one of those little TV screens that are loaded with like movies and games and TV shows. But Personally, I have kind of a short attention span and I find it kind of hard to watch movies back to back to back because I get bored. So what I tend to do is just load up my phone with a ton of games and apps before takeoff. Some of my favorite games are from an app company called Ketchup. Like, Ketchup, get it? Just because their games are super simple but super addicting so you can just play over and over again. Another good app to have if you are a nervous flyer is called Calm, which as you can guess is a meditation app that just plays relaxing nature sounds in the background. Also great if you are trying to get yourself to sleep through the flight. Tip number two is to bring the right snacks. Not just any snacks though. You probably all know that salt causes bloating just in general, but if you are eating really salty snacks like those uh, little bags of peanuts that they give you on the flight and you're thousands of feet up in the air, that bloating is gonna be way worse. I also find that if I eat sugary snacks like dried fruit on an airplane, then I tend to get these weird stomach aches. I honestly don't know if that's just me or if anyone else experiences that. But anyway, some of my favorite snack options are rice cakes. Personally, I like the salted caramel flavor because they're just the right amount of sweet. Kale chips, lightly salted pretzels, dried edamame, and also these chocolate chip crispy squares, which technically I think they're for little kids, but to me, they taste like a healthier version of a Rice Krispie treat, so they are perfect. While we're on the subject of food, there are some airlines like Delta that will actually allow you to choose your in-flight meal ahead of time. This is especially a great option if you are vegan or if you have any other like dietary restrictions. Honestly, a lot of times these options are better and healthier, and not to mention you usually get your meal before everyone else does. Otherwise, the default option is usually some kind of pasta loaded with cheese, which for those of you who aren't vegan might sound really good, but when you are flying, this kind of meal will usually leave you feeling really uncomfortable and bloated, at least from my experience before I started choosing the vegan meals, so just keep that in mind. Moving on to tip number four, which is to wear the right outfit. Even if you are flying somewhere where it's 100 degrees outside, planes are usually always freezing, so be sure to bring plenty of layers. A lot of times in the summer, I'll see people wearing like shorts and cute little dresses on the airplane, and I just don't understand how they do it. Like, especially if, I, if I'm on a long flight, I have to be comfortable. The outfit that I almost always wear is leggings, a comfy t-shirt, and a thick cardigan or sweatshirt to put on over. I also make sure to wear shoes that are easy to slip on and off, which also makes getting through security a lot quicker. And finally, tip number five is the one thing that I always make sure to have on any long haul flight, and that is an aisle seat. Now maybe this is an unpopular opinion because I know a lot of people usually hate the aisle seat and tend to go for the window seat, but this is really crucial for me, especially if I'm flying alone and I know that I'm not gonna be sitting next to people that I know. Here is why I go for the aisle seat and why you should also go for the aisle seat. Number one, you have a little extra leg room and you're not so trapped in your seat. Number two, you can get up and move around as much as you want without disturbing the people sitting next to you. The absolute worst thing is getting stuck sitting next to someone in the aisle seat who falls asleep and having an extreme urge to go to the bathroom and then having to wake that person up. I personally would rather be woken up rather than be the person who has to wake someone else up, especially because I don't really sleep on planes anyway. And number three, it's obviously important to stay hydrated when you're on an airplane, so having the aisle seat means that you can drink as much water as you want and then you have the luxury of just being able to stand up and go to the bathroom. I know that a lot of times you may not have the option to choose your seat, but if you can, definitely think twice before choosing the window seat. So there are your five tips for surviving a long flight. So the next time you find yourself sitting on an airplane for eight hours, you will be ready. Obviously, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. You know, the usual stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!